Yeah. All right. I'm going to be real, Ryan. I, I, I was reading this comic book, Once in Future by Boom Studios. Right. All right. It, this, this book, first off, what would you say the community's perception is? I was just going to say, I feel like we have to start by explaining that we, at least I speak it for myself, this is new. I have not read this until this segment. Once in Future is a brand new book to me, but as part of the IG comic fam, it's pretty much impossible to get on Instagram and not see people talking about this book. A lot of people reading it. Everyone is in love with Once in Future. So I was, you know, I knew I was going to get to it eventually. I was buying variants of the comic book just because I knew people were interested in it. And I thought, oh, well, you know what? It's Boom Studios. I'll get to it eventually. I read this book. Right. And I'm thinking, Ryan is going to freaking love this book. I don't know. But I, I can't get into this. I, I legit think that this is the first time I'm bringing a book to the table where I'm just like, comic fam, this is not for me. And I'm so interested to hear your response. I was thinking the same thing. No way. Yeah. Really? Oh, comic fam for real. I thought this conversation was going to be about how you like this. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. <sighs> I'm interested to hear your thoughts, but let's get, okay, let's go over the good. Let's go over light synopsis, light spoilers, you know, but really I want to get into why like, this like, wasn't for you. I feel like most people watching this will have seen, will have read the comic and we're the, we're the newcomers. We're the latecomers to the game. Sure. We're, we were only going to read one through six. I, I went ahead and I read, I read all of it. It's only up through issue 10. It's a relatively, relatively new series. True. So yeah, not my thing. It's not my thing. I'm sorry, really like, legitimately kind of surprised. I thought you would like this I book. I really wanted to because uh, everyone loves it. It's, usually I don't go with what everyone loves, but I felt like this one had to have something. To, it looked cool. Like the art looks awesome. I know the story is, is you know, mythical and very, very epic and important and relatively, you know, it's historical based. Let's get into it. Sure. All right. How do you explain it? Because I feel like I, it's, a, it's a hard one. Okay, so we have a an archaeologist, right, and his grandma, who turns out to be like OG, like old Buffy the Vampire Slayer to a degree. Surprise! Your grandma is actually a vampire hunter. Yeah, I don't know that that reveal didn't work for me, and I feel like a lot of your enjoyment of this series kind of depends really heavily on how much you care for this character. It's a cool narrative. I mean, it brings in like the mythological, the tales of King Arthur, Merlin. And really, that's what the bulk of these first issues are about, is the return of King Arthur. Whether or not it's going to be a return for the good or the bad, though, is the concern. And it's shaping up to be a bad situation. There's like this group of shadowy evil types who conspire to raise the skeletal corpse of King Arthur from the dead. There's like some artifact, you know, some sorcery stuff. Some going Indiana on Jones here. type stuff is yeah. happening and they bring him back from the dead. Turns out King Arthur is now basically like Black Hand from the Green Lantern, you know, Blackest Knight stuff. He's bringing a lot of other Arthurian knights back back to life, but they're basically zombies too, wearing suits of armor. It's pretty cool visual designs actually by artist Dan Mora. This team is actually quite strong. I mean, this is a a fun book for sure. I get why people are digging it, but it gets very horrific, which gets me in. And then with the comedy aspect of this, it pulls me right back out. And that's where it lost me. That's why this isn't for me. Yeah. I've heard this described as a comedy book by somebody. Dude, Karen Gillan, dude. <laughs> yes. That's, that's something that kind of frustrates me a little bit because we just talked about Die last week. And Karen Gillan was the writer of Die. And I went into this book based off of my love for Die. Kind of that was already, I was already pretty much on board. It was like, There's okay. like a serious level that we've had with this writer for a while now reading these books. And then all of a sudden, now that this is kind of a horror comedy. It's a horror comic. Whew, brings it down to a different level. There's a weird comedic streak through it that kind of undercuts a lot of the horror for me. And I feel like... I, Whenever they mash those genres together, I'm reminded of movies like The Evil Dead and like campy kind of horror comedy movies. And that never really does it for me. It's like my least favorite genre because I'm a big fan of comedy, but I like weird comedy. Like some of my favorite dark comedies are like The Lobster or Disaster Artist or something like that. But then I look at like my favorite horror movies and I'm thinking like Hereditary, The Witch, you know, Creep. and Creep, of course. And meshing those together it's like it's either going to be something along the lines of like Shaun of the Dead, which is kind of what I'm getting here a little bit or funny. You should mention that, actually. Why? Because uh, I read further than you and the creators actually make an appearance. They make a cameo appearance like the hot fuzz 
because they made they made hot fuzz so they're dressed up as their hot fuzz cops and it's clearly the you know it's the cops from the movie hot fuzz they get taken out by one of the zombie night guys it's pretty it's pretty fun okay so seriously there you go though it's like you see why this is all kind of like put together in a way that if you're a really like diehard morbid horror fan and you're into like some weird comedy this is this is definitely like lighthearted. it's fun but i just wish it was a little bit darker and more serious agreed but let's see what john from john's comics with kids has to say about this good idea once the future is so awesome, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I knew you'd like it. All right, comic fan, we got John from John's Comics with Kid on the mic, community member, and I'm very excited to have him on. Hit that like button. And John, hit us with why you love this comic book. You know, I'm, I, it may be my British heritage or what have you, but something about this book, the, the sense of humor, I mean, it totally reminds me of Shaun of the Dead, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of the whole Cornetto trilogy, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz. I mean, this really has that same sensibility where the humor is like understated, the genre is overstated. So you get this sort of like sci-fi horror on the front line. I think it's really well done. I, the art for me kind of like, kicks it up a notch the color work is phenomenal and i you know if, if you get a chance to even flip through the pages and look at all the way they use the colors and the hard black lines i think it really comes across as being dynamic all things i i think i agree with except for the uh what trilogy i don't even know what you called it i, I don't like those guys. yeah i don't care for those movies at all and i think that might be maybe why the series didn't speak to me what credit I will give it is its pacing, man. I, I dig how much you see in short little panels and then they just change the scene. It kept me interested. I mean, I was going page to page. Uh, I may not have been enjoying it to like the full potential, but I got something out of that. That might be one of my biggest issues with this story is that I felt like it moved way too quick and I didn't have time to like attach to any of the characters before they were getting like whisked along and carried along on some grand adventure that... It was just happening to them, it felt like, and and I was kind of drawn along for the ride and maybe forced along for the ride is, is a better way to put it because I didn't have time to like catch my breath or get my bearings even. Which for me is kind of the fun, right? Like the fact that they don't slow down for anything. Um, the grandmother, I think, is a riot. For me, it's like a British Betty White. Like I just see her, you know, I want to see her carrying around giant machine guns and shooting at people with sniper rifles. I think she is hilarious with her caches of bazookas and things. She is amazing. And all the comedy comes from the sort of uh, odd partnering of her and her grandson. And that's, that's really beautifully played against this horror nightmare of King Arthur returning from the grave. I really dig this protagonist that we follow because her grandson is like the opposite of what you would think she would be. You know, like you don't expect the grandma to be this badass is slayer. But you would imagine her son, her son's fit. He's this like slim guy and he's 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 dealing with his hands, but no, he's the nervous one. He's the he's kind of the old person of the group. That's a good point. The roles are kind of reversed. My whole, my biggest concern with this comic, this run, is like I feel like I'm just wrong. I feel like everybody else that's is what, right dude, about this okay, comic. That's what I feel like too, Ryan. That's okay. why I needed John I'm on really here. I'm really scared because I'm like be this against this comic, but I don't like it. And everybody loves Once in Future, and I'm really concerned that we're gonna get like a bunch of thumbs down and like angry comments on this one. But. Let us know, comic fam. What do you think? John clearly is laughing at us because he's he's feeling that uh, right now. But I think it's hilarious that, that Ryan is willing to at least acknowledge I'm clearly missing something here. And the fact that I think maybe you mentioned that that movies like Shaun of the Dead are not your British it, cup of tea. At least those I movies might be part of that. When I when I'm watching those movies though, I at least understand that they're comedies going into it and all throughout. I'm like I'm laughing more than I'm scared, which is, I think, part of the reason they don't speak to me on, on a film level. So I would rather watch a horror movie than a comedy. I would rather be scared than laugh. When you mash them together, the, there's always some kind of dissonance. And for me, this comic, there, there wasn't enough uh, comedy elements for me to even really uh, call it that in my mind. I liked, I liked the, the dialogue and the banter that was, that was going on between the grandmother and the grandson most of the time. It was very comedic in that sense, but it felt more like comedic relief from all the undead, like crazy epic happenings that are happening everywhere else. Yeah, I could definitely see that, but I think it needed that layer 
like uh, like Tom was saying, the, the the odd sort of role reversal of son and grandmother, which is kind of explained later. His sort of innocence uh, is important to this plot. Um, but yeah, you definitely have to have a layer of comedy to make the horror, which is beautifully rendered, like not as just overwhelming. Well, John's got that graded 9.8 die behind him. And I think that's where I was kind of left a little disappointed is that I was hoping that some of that serious, you know, role playing type of narrative, you know, they're talking about some like fantastical things, but it's also some deep, you know, emotional stuff that these characters are all going through. And then I walk into this story, hoping for at least a little bit of that, seeing the horror, being excited that, oh, it's going full horror. There's some like disturbing, disturbing imagery here. But then, yeah, it, it's it's left with, oh, it's all kind of for a gag to a degree as well. It's frustrating because I don't hate this comic. If it, it'd be it'd be easier to like talk bad about it if I was like really against it. I just I don't like it, and I feel like there's room for me to like it. I'm just not there yet. So maybe maybe once we keep going, maybe maybe once the second trade, maybe maybe there's maybe there's room there for me to grow into it. But not yet. What is really cool about it is the way they kind of steep it in British literature lore and the King Arthur legend is used so well in the first trade. And I think the second trade does a great job of bringing in other classic sort of British fiction. And that's hopefully a, a, a way they'll keep going with this story. Comic fam, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Are we crazy? I think I got to keep reading it. Hearing John talk about it, and I'm and I'm like now I'm like going back over it in my head. Like, all right, if I'm just like give it the. I just want to ask him what other British book he's talking about right now. I already want the spoilers. 